Hello yep. and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. I'm delighted to bring back our League of Ireland podcast and I'm delighted to be joined by Peter Manning from At Everything LOI. Peter, how are you today? I am absolutely wonderful. I'm doing great at the moment. Um, fresh out of bed, but you look. Where can we go from here? Well, this is it. Um, in case anyone doesn't know, Peter does uh, a lot of good work on TikTok uh, mainly, but he's on uh, YouTube and he's on uh, Instagram at everything LOI, and he does a lot of uh, work on, on League of Ireland, promoting the League of Ireland, and as, as it says, it's everything League of Ireland. So um, I contacted him, and uh, we're going to continue to have uh, a League of Ireland podcast, um, hoping to have it weekly. Uh, like this and we're going to just go through all the, the latest talking points and uh, you know it could be a case of if someone's in really good form and we get them on just to chat to them and stuff like that especially with the the business end of the season coming up um i thought it'd be a good time to get this back up and running um i'll be it might only be for a couple of months then we'll bring it back then uh for the new season but uh yeah peter i suppose um just to just to kick it off um it's just going to be us today we're just going to be talking through the latest talking points so i suppose if you want to um kick off with uh with any of the latest talking points and we'll, we'll go through them well the biggest things are the agenda of course windsor park Derry looking to use windsor park man united match rovers uh rovers you know shaky form at the moment and uh jonathan afalabi on fire yeah so, so we'll start off with uh, Windsor Park, of course. Yeah, well, I think, you know, people are making a big song and dance about this from a political standpoint rather than the actual football uh, side of things. It's it's handier for a lot of Derry fans um, to go to Windsor Park. We obviously have a lad in our uh, group uh, who is, he would go to the Derry games and he lives in Belfast and he was saying, like, a lot of people find it easier because a lot of the Derry fans maybe would work in... Um, in Belfast or whatever, uh, and they would find it a lot easier to go to Windsor Park. And you got to think of it from a Derry City point of view: is that they'll be looking to get as many fans uh, from their club g- going to it. And obviously, they can't use the brandy well, so the next best thing um, that's closest to them is going to be uh, Windsor Park. And I just again, it, it ties into having the people in the city or whatever that makes it easier for them to go to whereas it would be a lot harder than going to to dublin which is you know if you ever drove dublin to Derry, it's a it's a long l drive and then having to do it on, on a midweek after work and stuff like that i just think it would be quite difficult for fans so um yeah look i i, I understand it but you're always going to get people giving out no matter who you are what do you think yeah no like having gone to Derry before obviously for away games it's it's some trek up and back, and um, you're going up country roads, all that, just to get from Derry to Dublin. There was talks of using the showgrounds. I think uh, Sligo last year were able to use the showgrounds, but I think that was just an exception. Tala again, you're just it's a it's a hike for Derry fans. So Windsor Park, it makes sense. Obviously, there is a you know the question of will there be trouble? Will there not? Um, the IFA, FAI, they are they said they're all happy with it. Linfield themselves have said they're happy with it. So I think it's just down to UEFA at the moment. Um, Derry are talking about, I think obviously they, Derry fans say, bringing about 12,000, 15,000, somewhere in the realms. And I'm not exactly, I think when, Windsor Park's 30,000, is it? Capacity or something like that? Not sure exactly. But either way, it's, you know, it's it's big enough and it's what you want. And I'm sure there'll be other fans um, coming along and watching as well, just because it's a European game, you know, you're always going to get that. So, yeah, look, I, I really don't see the, the whole come out. Yeah, as you said, there, there could be trouble, but then again, there might not be. So it's just a thing where people are kind of looking at it going, oh, well, there could be this. There could, it's like, you know, there'd be enough police there or whatever, guard it. Uh, well, police in this scenario. Um, hmm. to, 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 to watch it like. So, and again, if you're smart, you go in a group. You don't go by yourself, you know, uh, if you're going to be wandering the streets in a dairy, like go in a group, you know, it would be the common sense, you know, um, and go in a group in more than maybe two or three, um, I would say. So look, go enjoy the football. Don't be thinking of the the what ifs and whatever. Um, hopefully Derry can do a job Thursday, Kazakhstan, and bring the tie back then uh, and go from there. That's just my take on it. I just, I find people just worry about stuff for just the sake of worrying about it and, finding reasons to be outraged rather than actually just going right okay that's where it's going to be held move on thank you next 
I look at like as you said, if they do beat this Kazakh side as well, they actually stand a fairly decent chance of getting the group stages. I'm not sure they will. I still think it's a bit of a, a, a pipe dream. I think who do they have? I think they could play Victoria Pleasden afterwards, which is I think they've been in the Champions League twice the past two seasons or past two seasons gone. So it definitely be difficult for them um in terms of getting into Europe. But yeah, as you said, bring a great crowd back, gets the Kazakh side, get a good result. Who knows? Yeah, well, look, stranger things have happened. So, I wish Derry well. Um, I'm still undecided on whether or not I'm going to go to the game yet. So, we wait <clears> and see, especially if they can bring something back uh, to to Ireland and, and see how they get on. Then that's fantastic and, and, and it might actually help them. Then, you know, the fans might be able to get them over the line. Who knows? But it's going to be uh, interesting to see what happens on Thursday mainly and then kind of go from there, I think. Yeah, yeah. It, you do also have the question, you know, with, with the European games, will that affect their um their form in the league? Will it affect obviously they have Pats to play in the cup? Will that affect them much? And now they've drawn it coming up on Sunday, draw it <clears throat> excuse me, draw a fairly decent side, you know. They have done dairy up in the Brandy Well so this season already, so I, I'm not sure. Do you think it will it affect their season at all? I think I think they might struggle to to beat Rohada just purely down to you know jet lag and fatigue and stuff like that. Mm. Um, I'm not so sure that their squad is as big as say like Shamrock Rovers, where like some as you saw last year in in Europe, Shamrock Rovers were able to kind of put out not the best side in Europe, but then obviously they were able to put out the best side in the league, so it didn't stop them from f- falling behind in the league. Um, so I think yeah, I think with Derry, I think they will struggle just because of the squad. Um, in terms of, I don't think the squad is as big, and uh, you know they did lose players like Ryan Graydon, who forget I know he scored his first goal for Fleetwood last night, who, who was brilliant for them. Um, so the, so as well as they're doing even without players like that, I still think their squad is uh, is a little bit slight. But I think uh, next season that they'll be or maybe in the summer they're or, sorry the off fields um transfer windows is a bit they'll be trying to get a lot more players in and maybe kick on again next year but i think they have to go all in on europe i think that's what they have to do now if if, if they're gonna try to do it i think they should try to do it and go all in on it and i think they'll accept that because shamrock rovers are flying uh, at the top of the league um whereas Derry are seven points off although they do have a game in hand um I just think it's going to be too much for them. I think they should be chasing a top two finish, but I think I just think it's going to be a step too far unless they go crashing out of Europe and then it's like okay, well we we're going to put all our eggs in the basket here and go for the league. But I just I just don't mm-hmm. see it to be honest. I think that they should be trying to prioritize Europe. What about yourself? Yeah, well, I've talked to a good few dairy fans. They've got a rare at the same point. They'd be happy with it. They you know top three place finish and then get you yeah, a good European run. That, that's what a lot of them are kind of saying. For them, I think that would be a fairly good season. Uh, it's, it's yet to be seen at the Cup, obviously. Pats and Derry, you're probably looking at that being the the, the biggest game in the Cup at the moment. Um, so, as a Pats fan, it's a bit... I, I wouldn't... Even, even with them in playing in Europe, I wouldn't be too confident facing them. But I'd be a bit more confident now that they are going to be playing in Europe in that way. But um, no, look, it'd still be a great season for them if they do finish third and get a good European run. Yeah. So, yeah, but look, best of luck to Derry uh, in in, uh, in Europe on Thursday. Um, we'll move on to the next point. What was it? What was the next point we had? Well, you did, you did touch on Rovers, which um, obviously they were in Europe. They have crashed out of Europe since then. Uh, did win against Cork there, 2-1 against like, White or Cork side, so I'm not sure that's a great reflection. Have, will they bounce back? I know they've got shells there on Friday. That's not going to be a very easy game for them. Um, what do you think? Well, obviously in Europe they they just weren't good enough um, for for the standards that they I suppose they've been holding for the last number of years. And you kind of look at the Dundalk and how they kind of held themselves in Europe. I know they didn't do amazing, but they still kind of. They were in games and stuff like that when when they were in Europe in the Europa League and stuff like that. So I think um, they probably let themselves down a bit this season um, in in Europe. Um, they're still obviously coasting along at the top of the league, and I still think they'll win the league. 
I don't see that being. Uh, I I just think they're just too strong, um, and they have enough experience of winning the league in the squad. Whereas I don't think like a Pat or a Derry. Well, Derry obviously do with them, the likes of Duffy and McElhenney and stuff like that. But I don't. Mm. I just think that Rovers have enough um, to get them over the line, and uh, just with Europe, I I just don't think that they were up to scratch. I don't know what it was, but. You know, because I was at the game against uh, Bleed Beck, I think they're called. Um, yeah, I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, I was at that game, and they just, yeah, they just struggled to get going. I don't know, is it? You know, are, are they getting a bit kind of um, stale under Stephen Bradley? I don't know. Um, there's a lot. Of, the, the players are quite. They've been around for a long time there. They've worked with them for a long time there. Um, so you'd wonder, is that the case? I don't know, but. Uh, I just, I just, I just wonder what will happen at the end of the season. I, I just wonder if Stephen Bradley will still stay around. Obviously, he's had so many issues, and my my hat goes off to him for for everything that he's been through off the pitch, and to still be able to come in every day and and manage the club. And you know, it, it's it's a mad situation that you're talking about a manager being top of the league in the league of Ireland, and then saying yeah. should he walk away. But it's just because I just see fans getting frustrated and stuff like that, and. It gets to a point where sometimes almost it's best to part ways. But I don't know. Like Stephen Bally might go, like, what are you talking about? Uh we're we're doing fine. And he might do a, he might need to do a clear out in the summer and get new, fresher, younger players in, and then all of a sudden it's a whole different dynamic next season because there's new players coming in and that are being listened to. Like but it's like that with every club. Look at Man City, like Pep is selling players out year in, year out. Um almost every six months look at Cancelo like he got him out and he was one of his best players he got rid of him like he just doesn't care obviously Rovers don't have that luxury but I'm just saying is that Pep has had players in and then he gets new players in um, because they they kind of they kind of get bored of listening to the same voice now again I don't know the insides and I haven't heard anything to, to suggest that but it's just from playing football in the past and this and that when you just kind of hear the same things over and over sometimes you need a bit of a fresh look but again i'd love to hear what shamrock rovers fans think of it um whether they want to stay on or not um they have been through a lot recently the, t- the club and um him and his, his family personally uh which i thought was quite good that they were stuck together through that and he had his chances to go abroad with lincoln and um, I think he was linked with the uh, MK Don's job at one stage as well, and he was well within his rights to be linked with those jobs. I think he's done a great job over the years. A um, couple of seasons back, I think during COVID, they were unbelievable to watch uh, the football they played, and just I thought I I definitely thought at the time his in-game management was was second to none. I just thought the way he changed games um, was was unbelievable. Um, <clears throat> you just. You can see he's he's one of these new modern managers who very highly rated. Um, I know we've got a, a good few in the league at the moment, but I just think he's he's the top and he's, and he's shown it for the last number of years. Obviously, he's had his own personal issues with his son and stuff like that, and maybe that's kind of crept mm. in and been a distraction. I don't know, but uh, I do think they'll win the league. But from a European point of view, I just wonder, was that one of the season objectives? And, you know, what way are the club looking at that? I've kind of rambled yeah. there a little bit. but I, sp- I suppose probably, it's probably the standards they've, they've set at the club and kind of what fans expect from, from Rovers because about well, the past two years now, they've won the league by, what, 13, 15 points. All of a sudden now there's actually a genuine title race. You know, the European exit, is that going to hurt them in the long term in terms of money wise? Um, they did. I, I don't think they brought anybody in this transfer window just gone. Obviously, they brought in Burke, Kenny, and um, Poom at the start of the try start the window or start the season. But um, yeah, it's you're looking at like an Asian squad. Even just watching them this season as well, I I don't think teams are I suppose afraid of them as much. They're they're not as. <sighs> They're not as dangerous as I've seen them the past couple of seasons. You know, when you're playing them, it looks like teams go out there and they say, you know, we can actually beat Rovers. Whereas last couple of seasons, it's just, oh God, we're playing Rovers. We're going to, let's just keep it, you know, let's keep it tight, lads. Try to get a draw or something like that. But all of a sudden now, it's like a lot of teams are looking and saying, you know, draw that have beaten so far this season. Like Derry have beaten them, but fair enough, Derry. Um, Shells, they have a very good, 
Shells have a very good record against Rovers this season. And obviously now they're playing Shells on Friday. And I'm looking at that game. Shells is the best defensive record in the league. Duff has got this team. They're not playing pretty football, in my opinion. Um, but they, they're very well set up defensively. So can Rovers get a result out of that? I wouldn't be confident. I'd be expecting a draw out of that game personally. But yeah. Yeah, well, I think like Duff, you know, Shells are sitting on thirty nine points, and then there's the Dock, who are just a point ahead, and then you've got Derry uh, on forty three. So Shells aren't a million miles away from, uh, you know, uh, finishing ahead of even Dundalk at the moment, and everyone's kind of going on about them making a late run to, you know, finish the season really strongly in Europe and stuff like that. Mm. So I think a lot of people write off Shells, and they just they just like to just give Duff stick all the time rather than actually giving him the, probably the credit he deserves. I know people are going, oh, well, he should win more games and stuff like that. But if you actually look at the squad that Duff has in comparison to other squads, he's, I think he's done a really good job. But then again, I also think that Declan Devine has done a really good job with both um, this yeah. season. And um, since John Daly's come in at uh, Pats, um, he's been flying as well. Yeah, uh, well, that's obviously another one, another game coming up this weekend, Pats and Bows, which is, I wouldn't be hugely confident as a Pats fan going into that game. I, I The way I see it going, Bows are very good at the moment. Jonathan Afalabi, absolutely on fire. I think he's got seven goals in nine games, or, or no, nine goals in seven games, something like that, which is just mental. Um, Obviously, Pats, looking from that perspective, we have Redmond back defensively, EK, that Sligo game, we looked a lot better. Now, granted, I don't, I didn't think Sligo were great at all, but even just Redmond put in a tackle there, I can't, was it Carly? I think someone was someone was running to the box anyway, and Redmond just got in, made a great tackle, got the ball away from him, and you kind of just said, you know, you, we missed that at the back. But Bowes, difficult side. They have beat us in Richmond Park this season, 2-0 so far. I know we beat them 3-2 in Daily Mount, but that was a bit of a, we almost didn't expect that, so it, it it could go either way that game, in my opinion. I'd expect one of the teams to win it. I don't think it's going to be a draw, but yeah. I I I think something that's kind of gone under the radar is, is obviously the sign of Danny Grant coming in. He's hit the ground running. Yeah. I think he loves Daily Mount playing and Daily Mount, the crowd love him there. I think him and Afalabi, <clears throat> and then they've got other good players there, McManus and stuff like that. Um I just think that I just think they're going to finish the season quite strong. I, I think that I think the winner of that game um, could potentially be the ones that end up finishing in the top three because I, th- I still think Derry will finish. In, I, I still think Derry will finish second, but I think it's between Pats and Bowes. I think for that third spot, um, I really do. I, I actually think Bowes at the moment look like they're going to fin- finish the season really strongly. I mean, you kind of get. A player like Danny Grant, who arguably when he left was one of the best players in the league at the time uh, when he first left Bowes uh, to go to uh, Huddersfield, I think it was. And um, I think when you look at him coming back, the momentum they have, Afalab, if he keeps scoring and enjoying himself and playing the way he has been, I think uh, they'll, they'll be a force to be reckoned with. Although Pats are, are doing quite strong and they might upset them. But I think it's that it's the winner of this, this weekend... Uh, or this Friday, whoever wins that, I think finishes in the top three. Although in saying that, there's still a lot of football to be played, and and in this league, as you mentioned earlier, with Drogheda beating Derry and Shells doing well against Rovers, anyone on any given day can can get a result against each other. So it will be it will be interesting, but it's it's exciting at the same time, and I think um it's great to kind because of, this this season I think has kind of disappointed. In it's it's not really been a season where you can kind of go wow you know everyone's been amazing but I do think Bowes have kind of went on a steady rise under Declan Levine. Um Pats had a little bit of a decline under Tim Clancy and now um, with the new manager coming in, I think they've had a new lease of life. Um, you might say they were unlucky in Europe. I'm not sure. I didn't see the the games in Europe. Yeah, no, okay. I wouldn't call it unlucky. No, um, look at the the way like the dude Lynch. I, I wasn't I wasn't at it now. I was watching it. Um, I was actually watching it in a hotel room over in Greece. But um, no, they weren't great at all. It was probably it was an absolutely brutal pass performance in all regards. But um, we did get obviously a late goal there, brought it back to Richmond. There was a bit of bit of life 
uh, we got sorry, we actually conceded early then. There was a bit of a lifeline goalie made an absolute, you know, chaotic on goal. Then I how that went in. And it did seem like Pats are back in the game, but I I I to be honest, they were definitely the worst side in that leg, uh, or in the entire two legs. So I wouldn't call it unlucky, but um definitely disappointing because obviously, you know, you're looking at the draw, do lens they're a good side, but Definitely a beatable side. Bowers, I think, beat them 4 0 before in Europe yeah, on aggregate. So, definitely disappointing. So, I think from a Pats perspective, we're still in a title race, I think. But as you said, I, I probably agree with you in Rovers, looking, uh, probably looking to win the league again. Can Pats chase it? If we beat Bowes, realistically, possibly. But you're looking at a very difficult run in the cup as well. I think that would probably be realistically more Pat's target. If they could beat Derry, you're looking at a good shot at going to the final. But um, yeah, look, at, obviously big game, Pat's bows. Um, could go either way. Um, what, what's your take on it as a Pat's fan? Putting your Pat's hat on you. What, what, uh, what way do you see the game going? Oh, I, I don't know. I know it'd be, it'd be one nail to someone. I'll call that. I'll back Pats just because it is Pats, but I wouldn't be surprised if Bowers came out winning the game order. So, fair enough. But I'd say it'd be one nail order way. Yeah, All right, and you'd be at that, won't you? Oh yeah, will. And I'll, I'll be at uh, I'll be at Shells and Rovers, so it'd be good. It'd be good to be able to come back and talk about this next week uh, afterwards, kind of, uh, and and see how everyone got on this week. Obviously, because there you'll have played their game as well. Um, but I suppose I think the last talking point we had was the the Premier League. Um, game that happened on Sunday uh, is that the last talking point we have yeah pretty much um I uh, calling that Premier League game is a bit you know you're, you're pushing it a bit there um I, I was more I of a sarcastic we, comment but yeah yeah <laughs> well I think I refer to it as a glorified training session with fit with 50,000 fans but um look at no no judgment whoever goes to these sort of matches, you know, I, I look, I follow English football as well. I wouldn't be as into it as I would have been when I was younger, but, you know, people free, free sport, whoever they want. But, yeah, I think they, they, it was three weeks ago, you know, it announced the game. It was gonna be There was going to be a game in Old Trafford before, and I think people should have seen that as the right on the walls that they didn't really care this much about, you know, this Dublin game put out. I don't know, actually, I didn't even look at the lineup. I just heard it was a second-string team. Good game. Possibly, I don't know. Do you want the? Do, um, do you want me to get the lineup? It was pretty bad. Was it? I. It's Tom pretty. He- it's pretty Tom, a lot of Tom Heaton in goal, who was Burnley's number one like five years ago. Uh, then you Jaden Sancho up front as a striker. He was like the star attraction. I think Ericsson played and Harry Maguire, and maybe yeah. Uh, I heard he made a bad blunder. He didn't really. He just got intercepted, and you've got booed. Yeah. Uh, I think Guan Bissaka played and then the rest were all players I'd never heard of and in the second half Johnny Evans came on so again Johnny Evans Tom Heaton I just think it's a bit stupid because you're, you're Man United obviously have a huge fan base in Ireland he's probably seen Man United yeah. Liverpool it's been a rise of Chelsea Arsenal. fans and right. Arsenal and yeah, Chelsea. it's now City because they're winning things Um you would think that the Man United uh, club itself would want to keep uh, the you, the Irish fans on board. I mean, they're, yesterday they're promoting Roy Keane in the jersey, who's arguably their biggest star in, in how many number of years, you know what I mean? Like He drove them on to so many league titles and he's looked upon as such a legend. And then, <laughs> I know he walked out in his country, but That's a- he, a lot of people support Man United because of Roy Keane. You know what I mean? So, yeah. like, there's a lot of people. If you go down to Cork, they, 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 you know, they are absolutely staunch Manchester United. Um, and I'm sure that there was people coming up to the Aviva from Cork or whatever that wanted to, and all over the country, uh, to come and yeah. see Man United and come see the the, the heroes that their their kids, uh, you know, want to go and see. And some of them might not be able to afford to go to games, which I understand to an extent as well. There's the housing crisis. There's so many other uh, expenses out there that these days. And to go over to a Manchester United game, I don't know how difficult it is to get a Manchester United ticket. I'm an Everton fan. 
and I don't really have that much um, trouble getting tickets, although we're absolutely awful at the moment. But I just think if you're a Man United or a Liverpool fan and, and when you hear that your team's coming to play in your country, you're obviously going to be excited. You're going to want to go. And when you hear tickets are mad money, you're thinking that the players that you want to see are going to be going. You're thinking of Bruno Fernandes, Casemiro, uh, all these types of players, uh, Rashford, um, and so on. Now, they didn't come. They played on the Saturday against Lons. And it was a bit of a joke. Like, I, I actually was accredited to work at the game. And when I heard um, that, I said, I, I'm not even bothering to go and cover it. There was no press conference afterwards. There was no mix zone. Oh, what was the point? Like you were, li- they were as far literally. As I'm sure the players literally just went straight out the door afterwards. That's what I mean. So, so. like uh, in previous years, like uh, when when I first started the channel, like you could go. Um, I remember Nemanja Matic signed. Um, Mourinho was manager, and uh, Liverpool were playing that week as well. And they brought players over, and they actually did it. Uh, the players did the press conference. Mourinho did. A, um, I say the players did the mix on, and Mourinho did the press conference. And it was good. And I think back then, the good players played. Uh, same with Liverpool. Um, so, for them to go backwards on this, I just thought it was a bit strange. And then they announced the friendly. It just didn't make any sense. It was it, look. I think Gavin Cooney said it on off the ball. It was just sneaky and deceptive. Uh, the mm. fact that they, the way they did it. Um, oh yeah, we'll play this. Oh, we'll have uh, Ericsson there and. Nobody wants to see Ericsson, especially after what he did in 2017 to us. You know what I mean? The last time he was in the Aviva. Nobody wants to see him. Um, you know, as good a player he is, and I'm delighted that exactly. he obviously is in good health and stuff like that now. But nobody wants to see him after what he did to Ireland in, uh, in that playoff. Um, it might have been 2018, I can't remember. I think it was 2017. But, um, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like Sancho is a decent player, but he doesn't even get into the team. So no. to have all these players, um, Tom Heaton, like, um, like I just thought it was a real kick in the face. And I, I, th- I think if ever it was an eye opener to fans to kind of go, like these clubs in the, uh, the Premier League, and they just they, they don't care about their fans too much. Um, no. I know, it might be I, I, like, for a jersey. Yeah, like, do you know what I mean? And whatever price the tickets were and everything else. Like, I, I, I actually genuinely feel sorry for the fans that did it. Like, I know a lot of fans. That, look, League of Ireland might not be their thing, but I can understand why League of Ireland isn't their thing, especially if you're going as, like, a family. There's one ground in the country that you can go and you can kind of go, right, we're going to have a good experience. The toilets are clean. um, You know, the the, the food is, is, is decent from the, from the chipper there. And that's Tallah Stadium. Every other stadium yeah. I look at, and go to the facilities are disgusting um it's you know it's it's just not the best facilities and that comes down to the government and getting funding but we're light years behind i i put it out the other day i said we, we are light years behind everyone else because Tallis stadium is the standard that all the other teams in the league should uh be trying to get their standard uh the stadium to um exactly. it's, not, it's not amazing don't get me wrong like it's it's a, it's a good stadium but it's not amazing it's not the it's not the Aviva, like, uh, but it's a good starting point, you know, to, again, clean, it looks nice, uh, it's an enjoyable experience at Tala, um, it's not, like, it doesn't look grubby or dirty or anything like that, whereas you go to most other grounds, and it is, um, you know, Talga Park, it needs really, really, it needs a lot of work, Richmond isn't so bad, but it does need a little bit of work. Um, yeah, yeah, daily man. So I, I'm not gonna go through them all, but like just Turner's Cross was it? To be fair, I like I do like Turner's Cross. The showgrounds I think is all right as well, Haven't been and there. Brandywell. But even at that, like you're looking at the fact as the whole Windsor Park thing, Derry can't even hold a game in in the Brandywell past this point in Europe. So yeah, no, I, I definitely agree with you. A lot, a lot of them do need to improve. Um, I know. A lot of them, there's plans for them to improve, but this is Ireland. How long is that going to take? Well, that's the problem. 20, you know. Sorry, I didn't mean to go. But that's the problem is that everybody says, well, we, oh, we're going to be doing this. We're going to be doing that. But the problem is it, it takes forever. And and while you're doing that, you're losing out on fans. Like, mm-hmm. I, I know the attendances and everything have been great and long may that continue and I hope that continues on. 
but you need to start as Duff said in that infamous thing where he's like you know the fans are bringing the standard and everything else but that's when he criticised the ref I said but the, the stadiums and, and, and all of that needs to be pushed now as well um, capitalising yeah but otherwise you just lose fans Like there's no point in having momentum and not capitalising on it Um I've been to, to America, Canada, all these places, and like the facilities that they have for teams that don't even get like fans to games was light years from what we have. Light years. Stadiums haven't haven't been redone in so long, and they just look. You know, you, you try and get foreign fans. I know Bose do. It. They get foreign fans to come to games. I'd love to know what they think. But they're probably coming in going the state of this like. Well, many you say that there was a there was a interview with was a who did the, the dog play K A? Well, I can't Klaxvig. pronounce the other name. Yeah, and one of their players was there talking about Dundalk and talking about Oriel Park, and he was just like talking about the state of the showers, the state of the entire pitch, basically calling it a shithole. You know, and so when you have a player from Iceland now, look at Iceland, not a great football nation, but in terms of how they're set up. They're much, they're miles ahead of us, Steve. Look at their stadiums. Yeah, they might not be the biggest, greatest things on the planet, but they're well-made stadiums. It's a well-maintained league. And you're looking at that sort of thing, and what we have maybe more than 10 times the population of Iceland. And they're doing us dirty, you know. They're not doing us dirty, but they're showing us up. Yeah, but the problem is, is that the, the, the government and whoever's in charge of facilities and stuff like that, they prioritise other sports. Rugby, yeah. uh, hockey whatever else uh horse racing but like but when it comes to actual football um even the GAA got looked after do you know what I mean it's, but when it comes to football I don't know what maybe it's to do with uh, the FAO the problem J- Joel, as Delaney called us yeah but I think if you if you sorted that out it would sort so many different things and I think that would would, would have more fans wanting to come because I, I speak to people all the time and they say oh, the only team I would want to go and see uh, Shamrock Rovers, and that's just because their stadium is, um, well, one, it's accessible, and two, it, it, it's clean, and that's a, yeah, that's a big it's thing. Safe as well, yeah, it's but, well policed, like yeah, it is, and you don't go there. It's not intimidating. It's not, you know, it's um. Well, I don't know if you go there as an away fan, but like, I just mean, yeah. if you're going as a family, it's not an intimidating ground or anything like that. You don't, you don't feel like you're gonna. Or someone's gonna attack you or anything like that when you're in the stadium and stuff like that. It just is. It's, it's more of a kind of family feel, I think, unless you're obviously over where the ultras are and they do whatever they want um, over there. And if you want to go in with them, you can. But I think if you're going as a family or whatever, and that's where it's gonna all starts from. Like we've all gone with our families over the years, and that's where you you get to love it. My dad used to bring us to talk every week, and my cousin and my brother and all of our friends used to go. We all had season tickets, and if someone couldn't go, then another fellow would come on another season ticket. Uh, you just put a thumb over the the, the face, and uh, and you'd be going in. <laughs> and that's how we like a lot of my friends now are shells fans from years ago, and they'd all be from you know my area, which is far out from from Tolka and people go oh why did you support that it's because my granda had me going since I was a kid and then it was my dad would bring us and that's how it all that's how the love of it starts I was just blessed that I, fo- I followed Chels in a time where they were unbelievably doing well in the league in Europe the Hadrick Split game the Deportivo game and stuff like that Um, don't think we'll ever get back to the heights uh, for a long time but it's just those things like that and you have those memories for life whereas you support Manchester United and your 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 memory as a kid of them coming over is their reserves coming. It's not a very nice memory, is it? No, no. I do think people are definitely warm into the league though. I've definitely had like I have a lot of mates now though. They might not go to every game, but you bring them along to a game and they say, like, look we'll go we'll go for the crack, watch a League of Ireland game. Um it, even like I remember obviously staring off, you'd be standing there on the Kamak. I've since moved into the main stand, but you know, people are, I think, warming up to a bit much, a bit more. The quality has gone up. I don't know as much as people as people expected it to have gone up. I think people kind of thought it was had gone up a lot better. And then you've kind of watched Irish games or Irish teams in Europe, and it's kind of like maybe we haven't improved as much as we thought we have. That's probably down to now, as you said, improving facilities, but even more than that, improving academy systems with the fact that we've got Brexit now that 
we're going to have to keep these Irish lads over here for longer unless they go over to the European mainland. But they might not be, you know, as willing to do that because, you know, to go to Italy, you're, you know, in a much different culture. Ireland, Ireland, you know, and England, different countries, but culturally very similar. So you can go over to England, no problem. And kind of, you know, you obviously don't have to learn a new language. Whereas now we're having to keep these players here. So academies as well, kind of getting them developed, doing that, um, putting the work in, putting the money in, in that regard. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, I think it's. Uh, I think the people that are doing the academy stuff and the underage stuff are doing a brilliant job. You see that with the results yeah. we get from uh, the Irish point of view. You know the underage um, competitions and stuff like that. We've been doing quite well in. You know, you look at the number of players that we're starting to produce uh, underage level, and obviously done those players that are going straight into the senior team. We've seen it with Stephen Kenny the amount of players that have graduated up to the to the senior team, I think that's starting to show. So we have players there. It's just a matter of getting them regular game time um, and stuff like that and then and, and then development. But again, um, you need to be able to, to help these lads out by giving them the facilities and the, the I suppose, the stuff that they need because the coaches seem to be doing the, the business, but give them what they need, give them to, to be able to push it to the next level, to, to be able to go and compete. Um, it's great to have the players here for that little bit longer with the with the Brexit and stuff like that, but I do think it's uh, it's frustrating at the same time is that we're still here talking about facilities in 2023 20, and nothing seems to be do, uh, doing different, but I think we'll leave it at that. Um, anyone who has any strong views on it or anything like that can let us know what they think in the comments. Um, Huge thanks to Peter as well for, for coming on. This will be a regular slot that we'll have now every week. So if there's anything that you want us to discuss maybe next week or anything like that, make sure you get in touch with us. Um, don't forget to give uh, Peter a follow as well at Everything LOI. Nearly at 10,000 uh, followers on uh, Getting there, TikTok. getting there. Yeah, so make sure to head over there and, and give him a follow on that because he does do really good videos and really good insightful videos as well. Um, and there's also funny ones as well that he likes to wind up other, other fans so uh, go over and get yourself wound up on that um, we will speak to you soon don't forget to like the video don't forget to subscribe and we'll talk to you all soon have a nice day